Joining us now from the province, province.com, it is the one and only Patrick Johnson. How are you, PJ? Gentlemen, good morning. Feeling good? Have a good long weekend? Nice and relaxed? Spent a lot of time in the lake. It's very good. What lake ah. were you in? Birkenhead Lake. Did you? I'm going on Friday. Yeah. Fabulous. Interesting. Fabulous. You, you guys yeah, camped well, on the uh, far end there? <clears throat> yeah, it wasn't too smoky. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, we had, we've had gone up there a couple of years now with some friends. And, it's a good spot. Um, yeah, it's 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 close enough, but also complicated enough that, you know, it's yes. great to get to, but also people, there's no yahoos, I find. And was it, <laughs> was it warm ish? I know it's, I know it's a cold lake. The temperature but, was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, it yeah. was great. Yeah, everything was uh, spot on. Time. Kids had a great time. We had a bunch of floaties and sat on the beach, and it was great. Good to hear. Would, would the other campers agree that there were no yahoos, or is that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Says the yahoo, yes. of course. <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, we're we're going to use you as our uh, post Rick. Uh, analyst here, right? Um, for lack of a, a better, let's let's break down what we uh, what we learned there, if you will. But for, let's ask you the poll question first of all, because it, it dovetails into some of the info there. And who do you think plays more games for the Vancouver Canucks this year, Ethan Bear or Tanner Pearson? Conventional wisdom being, of course, uh, one is signed, one is not. So that puts yeah. Pearson ahead, although. Yeah. You know, one is probably tradable, and and one is going to have a tough time finding a, a suitor in, in Ethan Bear. Is Tanner Pearson tradable? I mean, eventually, eventually would be tradable if he got some games under his belt. Yeah, and I think that's the thing to mm -hmm. me. In a trade scenario, he needs to play. Mm -hmm. So you have Ethan Bear. Who, you know, I had a really nice chat with him. Was good catching up. Sharp guy. Like I'm always, you know, sort of selfishly as a media person, hope he is back because he's got lots of things to say and is really smart and well considered and I think very self aware and you know stands out in a crowd in terms of uh, you know hockey players being able to answer questions with some depth. Um, but he's not going to be back till December. I mean, he's kind of hoping maybe he might be a bit ahead of that, but he's being realistic. And that's yeah, almost half your season. And, okay, Tanner Pearson obviously is coming over off a substantial injury. Uh, but if he is indeed able to play right off the hop, as we seem to be gathering from Rick and, I guess, from Patrick Alvin a month ago, uh, there is every reason to think that he will be healthy and able to play. And, you know, with the cap hit, it's hard to imagine them not putting him in the lineup uh, because exactly that, they need to get rid of him. And this is a guy that you go look at his record. I mean, other than last year, has been pretty healthy in his career. You know, when, uh, L.A. mostly was a full-time guy. That one season where he played for L.A., Pittsburgh, and Vancouver still got basically full-time minutes. Um, was a regular before the pandemic started. Uh, played 51 games during the COVID season, which was one of the top numbers on the team. And um, and then 21-22, only 68 games. But you know, he's a guy that's been pretty healthy and he, and he's got, you know, he's built like a player that you would expect to stay healthy. So I think just from that alone, I think it's pretty easy. Tanner Pearson's going to play more games than Ethan Bear this season. I think we all want the best for Tanner Pearson, the human being, but let's be honest, how does this, con how much do you think it complicates things for the Vancouver Canucks if Tanner Pearson shows up on their doorstep at training camp and is yeah. good to go? Well, massively. You look at the combination between him and, and uh, Tucker Pullman, who I guess, I mean, I'm not surprised, but it sounds like, yeah, he will be an LTIR story. Um, that's, you know, $5.75 million that uh, you can essentially find replacements for. But uh, if Pearson is indeed able to play, that's three and a quarter. Um, and that means you're going to have to make some other decisions. You know, that, that that is potentially a block against, say, someone like Niels Hoagland or Vasily Podkolzin. You know, that, that, that there's guys that have to be in the lineup. Um, but it also makes you know that much more pressure on figuring out what you're going to do with Connor Garland and Brock Besser, and is there a way to change up your mixer or Tyler Myers? Ever, you know, I think a few people pointed out now Eric Carlson's no longer a San Jose Shark. You know, is maybe there a fit there? We we heard a noise before um, from Frank Cervelli, I think it was. But yeah, I, I it, to me, if Pearson's playing, that means someone's going to have to go. I don't know you know how much of an advantageous position that will leave the Canucks in they may have to make a move for the sake of making a move um but I also think it could be one of these ones that they they'll you know get to the end of training camp see where they're at see who's hurt see how they can structure things out if that is a skill in the modern game which is creating a roster that's bigger than the cap and uh some teams do it to win championships and some teams do it just to ice a lineup on opening night like your Vancouver Canucks I saw people connecting the dots with the Carlson move right. and San Jose. But honestly, 
I I can't figure out what San Jose is yeah. or maybe maybe I can. Like I mean, it is just a complete mishmash there. Uh, Kyle Burrows, who couldn't get into the Canucks lineup yeah. on the regular, like he's probably going to be a top four defenseman on the San right. Jose Sharks. So I don't know that they want Tyler Myers. Like it looks like it's going to be all systems go to get the first overall pick next year. Yeah, I mean they have two first rounders, right? Like they have the Penguins one as well. They've got two second rounders. I mean that, that there's a clear focus on the draft for next year, at least where they're sitting right now. And yeah, as you said, you've got what's five fours who are going to be UFAs next summer, two defensemen, a goalie, like. They have created a scenario where they're going to be resetting a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, they've got Hurdle and Couture on long-term deals still, but they're going to be resetting a whole bunch of stuff next summer. So, yeah, I mean, to me, that is one of the things I suppose that puts Myers in that category that fits because he is off a contract next year. You need guys to play in the NHL. Um, but as you said, if you're if you're trying to not win, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I still I still think pretty highly of Tyler Myers. I don't think he's a top four defenseman. I don't think he ever was. Uh, I think on your third pairing, he's perfectly fine. Uh, but, of course, he's not paid as such. Now, the that may be the one thing. Is At the end of the day, the Penguins are like, well, yeah, well, we can deal with it. We can handle that money. Um, we'll we'll see, I suppose. Or not the Penguins, the Sharks. The Sharks yeah. 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 So, we'll see. I mean, it's, they're still, they're st the Sharks themselves still have to make some cap choices as well. Like, it's not like, it's not like it's just an easy slide in fit. They're going to have to rearrange their roster a little bit as well. Um, but, uh, you know, as it stands, it looks like, you know, you look at it, you're like, I'm pretty sure that's their roster, but, you know, you can change some things around. They would have to make some changes still to get Myers on that, on that roster. So Do you we'll think see. Tyler Myers is, is like starting now with a, with a couple of these pressure points? Do you think he's starting to wonder, like, on September the 16th, am I just going to get traded? Like, there are some pressure points in the last 72 hours that weren't there, in that Pearson looks like he's coming back, and and yeah. and the roster space has been made and the cap space has been made in San Jose. I right. mean, he probably doesn't feel that great coming into camp right now in terms of just, like, his uh, feeling settled, that is. It's settled. Yeah. It's just, that's a nice soccer word. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I could see that. I, I you know, especially because you know, there's a guy. He's a parent. Like he's got his kids. He thinks about his family. Part of the reason, you know, I had that fun story I wrote at the end of the year talking about how much these guys actually like living here. And that honestly, you know, I think people heard if people listen to JT Miller's segment on the on the Canvas Trick podcast, I mean, it's something JT himself talks about. He like the players like living here. Mm -hmm. um, there, there is no doubt about. It's not that. the media. Yes, yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> right? I get it. But yeah, no, that's that's the thing. You know, there's a guy that they they obviously he came here trying, hoping that the team was going to be progressing towards something. He played on some pretty good teams in Winnipeg. Came here obviously thinking he could make this team better. Uh, when he signed four years ago, we are looking at a player that in the end, I think he recognizes it's a business, but it's still never. You never want to hear your name being bandied about. You don't want to hear us talking about it. You just want to know you have a job and you can plan out your. Plan out your year and mm -hmm. not have to think about how that's going to affect everything else. Uh, Canucks are still trying to do something, though. Um, whether it's Myers, whether it's a winger, um, by all accounts, they are they're yeah. in the market. They are trolling here still, right? Yeah, I mean, it's been obvious for, I think, you know, essentially since this regime showed up a year and a half ago. Uh, this They've been wanting to make some changes. They've made a bunch of changes. Um but I think as we've all said, like there's just it's, it's still a roster that's you know it's a roster that might make get you in the playoffs, might maybe you know you get the right opponent, you win around, you never know. But you know I, I think it's they've got a fantastic top end. But you know you shouldn't stand still. That's certainly the lesson. I think if you're not winning, if you're not in the playoffs, why are you standing still? So I, yeah, it would not surprise me to see them trying to do something else. They certainly I think behind the scenes have been talking about that. But again, like I said at the deadline. I think I've said more than once, felt like there was a mid trade that didn't happen. And then I think, we, you know, it was a bit surprising that nothing happened at the draft, um, but maybe not. I don't know. They, they've, they've been generally pretty conservative on things, and here they are. Pat, what kind of expectations do you have on Ilya Mikheyev coming off, you know, significant surgery, but we have seen others, medicine, modern medicine has allowed guys to come back from reconstructive knee surgery, but speed right. is such... A uh, calling card yeah. and a, and a we uh, you know a weapon for him. Like we've heard that he's progressing and that he's going to be ready for training camp. But do you anticipate that he's going to be up to full speed and hit the ground running, or do we 
do you expect that we maybe see him kind of ease his way back in? Because we know the NHL isn't a place to ease your way into anything. Right. I mean, that, that, the speed thing was why they signed him. And, uh, you know, obviously any knee injury, any surgery, you're never 100% really. I mean, you are 100%, but you're not the 100% you were before the surgery. Right. So, you, you know, that is... I hate to break it to all of us. That is how aging goes. <laughs> we are not as good as we were the day before. Um, and I think to me, that is the big question. Can he, I think he'll be a very fast player. I think he'll be much closer to the player that he was in Toronto than he was at the start of the season. I think um, our friend Cam Sharon, who has now moved on, uh, but Cam talked a little bit about this in a few of the stories he wrote, I think, last fall, especially, you know, as a guy who watched McKayab up front, he had an interesting perspective. And he talked a lot about um, how, you know, I mean, there were a couple of stories I think he wrote last year, both on his site for The Athletic, about, you know, this was not the player that we could see in Toronto. Um, and, you know, the, the, there were a couple moments I think we saw in, 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 in the season where he was able to turn it on a little bit, but... Yeah, there, that's a power. Like your ACL is a big into sort of pushing the power of your stride, um, and so you know, assuming it heals all, all heals up very well, he'll be you know, hopefully the fast, fantastic player. And you know that that Pedersen, Kuzmenko, McKayup line was pretty fantastic when they were together. And so you kind of wonder if 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 they'll be able just to hit the ground running, if you will. That's going to be interesting because obviously. They weren't together under Tockett because uh, Tockett had Mikheyev for three games and then they, yeah. you know, shut him down. Um, and yet I wonder too. And and you're right. Like, I mean, anybody that played with Pedersen had some success, but that I think that is a possibility for the Vancouver Canucks. But I also wonder would Mikheyev be better served on the wing with a guy like J.T. Miller, who we know has some defensive warts, and yeah. maybe Mikheyev could sort of provide that layer of insulation defensively for a player like Miller. Well, yeah, I mean, certainly he was a guy that they added because they thought he would help the penalty kill. <laughs> and then we know how that went. Um, yes. Yeah, I, sure, entirely possible. I, 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 he is an interesting player. He remains an interesting player that you can add to this roster, um, uh, assuming he's, like I said, he's healthy and is able to recover. I mean, Pavel Bure, we can think back 25 years. It took him an entire season to get his confidence back. I'm not, I don't know whether Mikheyev finds himself in that spot. I mean, I saw him briefly... Um, I think it was at the end of the season uh, when you know I was coming in the building. He was coming out the building. We talked briefly outside, and he said, "Yeah, I mean that was obviously very early in his rehab, but said he was feeling really good and uh, yeah, feeling positive. And you know, I think generally he's been a pretty upbeat, positive guy. So we'll see. It's crazy to look at his games played and, th and think that he actually played that amount last season. Yeah. He just feels like he played eleven games and was injured. Um, but yeah, that tells yeah. you about how." Uh, much scrutiny we gave to that half of the season because they were already out of it. You know, we just yeah we weren't yeah. really going through it with a fine tooth comb. Uh, PJ, thanks for this uh, pleasure as always. And uh, another week down, we're uh, we're we're chewing out uh, August here, and it'll be hockey season before we know it. I had to sit there and think about it. When do these guys show up at eight rinks again? Yeah, so we'll see. Pretty soon. Yeah, if, pretty soon. If Talk had had his way, they're probably already there. Oh but... <laughs> boy. Yeah, maybe I should go see if Rick's standing in the parking lot right now. <laughs> Thanks, PJ. Take care, guys. This is a Carousel Price clip brought to you by Jason Dot Mortgage.